Hi, Hunter. I am doing fantastic, and I love your mustache. Thank you very much. It's new. <laughs> I have a very loud and not as polite as your chihuahua pit bull locked in a bedroom upstairs who also <laughs> said hi to your chihuahua. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he has to be in my lap or otherwise he will be running around causing chaos because he loves to get attention while I'm working. <laughs> exactly. The last time I did one of these, my dog just brought me the bone the whole time. So we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'm like on a call and I'm like, mm -hmm, I'm like playing fetch off camera. <laughs> but that is, that is uh, all of my meetings uh, when I do a peer group start with me, let's meet your pets. So that's great. Perfect. So, so I mentioned the peer group, who I am. Yes, <laughs> please. So I would love oh. Um, I could read your bio, but I'd love to hear it from you just so we can get straight into it. Can you tell us a bit yes. about yourself, your story, your background? So I'd love to jump in. the reason I write under the autistic burnout is when I was diagnosed in you know my late 30s, my patterns of burnout were really what helped me hone in on the autism. And mm. You know, I, I was sort of a wunderkind, like they didn't have autism in the 80s. They knew I had a very high IQ and I had sensory issues. And because of the way it was framed and there was no name for it, it was sort of seen as an advantage, which it can be. But I never had the support system and an understanding of my needs that would allow me to really follow through and use my talents to achieve. So starting with childhood, cycles of burnout happened. As an adult, I opened my first restaurant at 30. And then once we hit a snag, my cycles of burnout just made me, we lost the restaurant because of a health issue, but I could have held up for my partner had I not been so burnout and had yeah. I had a better understanding. And that led into a food truck. And a movie that you can see on Showtime, I, I filmed the Made in America documentary. And by the time it came out for distribution, I lost my food truck from burnout. And so that's what precipitated going for mental health evaluations and eventually getting this autism diagnosis. And now I write about the thing that is the scourge of my life. And I try to help prevent other people from not realizing their potential. That's so incredible. Thank you for sharing that. And there's so much to just dig in there just uh, right out of the gate. And to set the tone a little bit, I'm curious, I think a lot of us over the past couple of years have been talking about burnout in general, you know, now that we're yes. working remotely. And that I think is a bit of a, a topic on people's mind. But can you help us clarify what the difference might be or the, the specificity might be in burnout versus autistic burnout? Okay, I'm really glad that you framed it that way because a lot of what I have to say today is going to have the caveat of not just for autism. So that being said, you know what feeling burnout looks like, feels like and looks like on a regular basis from stress. Unfortunately, if you live in this country, you probably have had experience. Now imagine what you think of as all the symptoms associated with autism. So in order, and on top of being really, really tired and sort of stressed out and not having any interest in anything, all of the things that we work really hard to hide, like our direct communication style, our stims, the repression of all that great monotropic information we wanna dump on our coworkers, that's gonna be more difficult to manage in social settings. And so what that looks like from the medical standpoint is a loss of social skills, right? And now, now that I've said that, that's sort of universal. Burnout can look different for different people. And I want people to understand autistic burnout isn't just lying on the couch, completely unable to get up the stairs, kind of like when you have the flu, like that level of deep exhaustion. But it can also look like functioning at work, getting it done for your kids, not being present and having zero time for a social life outside of that. And those are cycles that can last for years. And those are both types of burnout. So there's a lot going on with burnout. And it really, that being said, there's more research is needed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, like you said, there's, there's, it can show up in so many different ways and it can be different for different people. And I'm curious if you could talk about 
um, for folks maybe that aren't as familiar with, uh, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about autism. You talked about some of them right now about uh, some of the direct communication styles, and that might be different than other people. What are some other, and maybe you could help us understand the spectrum. You know, these are just words that I feel like sure. maybe are thrown around a bit, but so what like you're gonna you said, get since the 80s, it's like a lot of people don't actually know what's really going on. Let me tell you, a lot of people working with autistic populations don't know what's really going on. Right, right. So the general public definitely doesn't. So what you're going to get is uh, exhaustion. There's a sort of, it's really hard to explain to someone that doesn't have this daily experience, but going out into the world to the store for us has you know for you it might be a one page experience as a neurotypical went to the store oh it's kind of cold in here oh that's my friend bob and oh they're out of smuckers for me it's a ten thousand word document it's oh my god do i have my earphones because people might talk to me and then is it going to be too cold because i can't take it i literally can't take it I'm, i get rain odds and my finger might turn blue and then um, oh, well, uh, there's a guy in the aisle, which way, how do I pass him? How do I pass him? Which way do I go? That is energetic. That burns calories. That creates a level of exhaustion. So when you're not well-rested, well-fed, and ready to go out and process all that information in the background, that's going to cause a, that's really, I feel like that might be the essence of it. That's going to cause a downstream effect. Whatever you have the most difficulty with is going to be difficult. If it's uh, social banter, it's you're going to be distracted. You're going to be not inside your body because your body is sort of painful. So your mind wants to go somewhere else. Um, I think people might be familiar with sensory sensitivities in autism. So that is where you sort of get the odd self-stimulating movements you might see that is, you know, signature to the diagnosis. You might see the association with headphones or spinners because noise can be a problem and having something to do with our hands so that we can process information can be necessary and all of these sensory factors that go into making our nervous system comfortable are harder to manage when you're in burnout but literally the lights are brighter and they hurt my eyes it's that I still can't get my doctors to understand that fluorescent lighting hurts my eyes. <laughs> they just don't understand. It's very hard to put yourself in someone's shoes and, and think that something you do every day could be so difficult for others. But those little everyday things that we manage in the background are now front and center. Um, among that, I would also say managing emotions. Our emotions go up to 11, spinal tap reference there. <laughs> we, we have like a martial stack of emotions and it's, it's, um, it's really hard to sort of muffle that to just have a day at work, right? And when we're exhausted and we're burned out, it's even harder. And then we snap and that's when you get meltdowns or shutdowns where you literally just turn into a zombie because you're overloaded and you just cannot. Um, along with that, you might have difficulty adapting to changes even more so. And just a really, if you think about it, our lives are already pretty uncertain because we might walk into a grocery store and get a headache from the lights or, you know, we're managing so many other things in the background that when a change comes into our schedule, it feels like a loss of safety. And so that can hit really hard when you're tired and burnt out. And that can be easier to take if you're in the right mindset, you're well rested and your body is not hurting at all. And then yeah. finally, like the last stage is depression. And burnout can lead to cycles of depression that end in self-harm. It's not a little thing. So yeah, I would say those are the characteristics you're gonna see amplified. Yeah. And so uh, there, it sounds like there's, there's so many different things that can happen and there's different ways that it can happen. Um, I'd love for you to share about, cause you've, you you share so eloquently about this. What are some strategies for preventing uh, the burnout? How can we do the self-care so that we don't get to that breaking point and maybe catch those little bits and those, those little markers on the way? And what do some of those little markers look like for you possibly? 
Right. So the first thing I would suggest is little markers are hard to pay attention to, especially when you're sort of disassociating through your day. So write it down. Let's start with a journal, um, a journal entry, whatever that looks like for you. Uh, what, what happens today? What were my feelings today? Um, this will also prevent you from unloading on the few friends you have to support you, right? If you're just like getting all that trauma dumping out about work onto a piece of paper, not only do you have a record of it, so you can start to look for patterns and say, and we'll talk about some other tips and use that information and some other tips down the road, but also it sort of gets it out of your system so that you don't burn out your support system. And the second thing, nobody likes to hear it, but I we don't have time for my lecture on trauma being stored in the body. You have to move your human body. I know our lifestyles and work aren't, aren't adept to that. It, it doesn't have to be like, you don't have to go to like a CrossFit, okay? Set a timer, it's built into Windows. You can build in like a work thing if you have a Windows computer at work where they set a timer for you to take a break. Walk around the office once, get, uh, I think, rebounding is fantastic you could get a little mini trampoline like that big put it next to your desk get that get the lymph fluids moving get your body moving it really will help you think clearer and and also when you're burnt out i hold my breath breath is so important to regulating your vagus nerve and the ph of your blood that like just moving a little bit and taking a couple deep breaths could seriously alleviate some of that the buildup of cortisol of your regular days. So I know people don't like to be told to exercise, but just move the body, um, just move it around, get those fluids, the juices like flowing and you'll feel better. This is another hard one, my next prevention tip. If you have to work with a counselor, work with a counselor, buy a self-help book. You gotta learn to say no. Our entire childhoods, we were conditioned to not say no, and we want so hard to be likable because we can present as unlikable. You got to learn, you got to let go of it, and learn to say no. This is a years long process, like years long. So I'm not saying like, I'm judging you if you're people pleasing. I people please all the time. I still do it, but I'm learning and there's an effort there. And it feels, it's so rewarding. It's it'll help you, you know, move on with the process. And, and it might involve cutting out some people who drain you and being really honest with yourself about if talking to Aunt Martha, who just complains about you not being married yet once a week is, is like really working for you right now in your life because you're dealing with eight deadlines. You know, I'm not saying cut them out forever, maybe just like make an excuse you know, or tell the truth. A lot of times we don't want to say, I'm, I'm really busy with work right now. Uh, we want to be people pleasing. But that goes back to the learn how to say no. Um, medication would be my next tip. I really, I will die on this hill. I think uh, stimulants should be prescribed for autism. I think a lot of people have ADHD comorbid. And if you're working in an office, I really think it would help. We are asked to do neurotypical tasks and we are not neurotypical. And I have a lot of research behind uh, dopamine deficiency being uh, present in childhood trauma and in, I don't like this term, but the papers are written about level one autism. So I think the society has to loosen up their, you know, has to look at what works and what people need. We have these expectations we can't meet if it would work for the individual to, you know, my people with ADHD have a choice, right? Do I want to make my lifestyle around just coping skills or do I want to meet my goals, which might be a little higher and then ask for help from my doctor. And I think autism has similar traits and should similarly be treated. There's almost nothing that addresses autism, just comorbidities. So, you know, it's time to really look at this spectrum and how far it meshes into ADHD and uh, the amount of 
cross lap crossover, especially in individuals who are successfully participating in the workforce. Um, beyond that, if another medication works for you, it's nobody's business. You take it. We're like I said, we're asked to do neurotypical tasks, and we are not neurotypical. So if we have to fill in the gap, fill it in with something that works for you. Um, my final tip for prevention would be listen to your body early, right? Headaches. This is goes back to what are some signs for me? <laughs> headaches, 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 stomach aches, just panic attacks being triggered frequently over little things. Um, you know that feeling where you can't walk up the stairs because your legs are heavy? 100% associated with burnout for me. So if it's been like a long day and you're like, <laughs> that's like a little that before you get to the full stuck to the couch position, like this is your body. Again, move your body. It's stuck in your body. Your body is trying to tell you. But in America, push through it. Yeah, you did such a good job. You pushed it, you, you know, to the limit. Like, no, no, <laughs> you, that's where past the limit is burnout. So welcome. So yeah, those would be prevention tips. Those are, that's so much amazing information there. As you can probably see, our chat is on fire right now. We have so many people resonating with you. Don't feel pressured to read all of it. I'm kind of like checking in there as well. Um, so much great stuff in there. People are chiming in about how they hadn't heard some of these tips before, uh, the medication track. Some people are resonating with they hadn't done that, that they have done that. There's success stories in there. So thank you, everyone, for your participation right now. This is, yeah, Brenda just said this is so helpful for me. Um, so there's so much great stuff in there. I loved how you talk about, I'm just going to fire off some recaps there, and then we're going to move on because we have so much to cover. Um, I do want to address like one please. thing I saw in the chat. Please. Uh, because it's something I'm working on right now. Uh, there was, and I'm just sort of glancing over it, a, a, a question about those who are not able-bodied to move their body. Mm. And I was born with uh, extensive Herb's palsy and another type of nerve damage. And um, I'm really inspired by, there's a gym in the UK that is literally only works with people who are not able-bodied to let them see how they can still participate in physical movement, sport, and working out. So I would challenge you to say, like, right now, after 23 years of practicing yoga, I am taking my first yoga teacher training course because I was too embarrassed to ever do it because I was disabled. And now I'm going to be out there next year producing videos specifically for people with disabilities. So next year, come on out to my yoga class online <laughs> and you know because it's important we are the medical model of disability robs you of the thought that you have the human right to move your body and you just move it differently so, yeah i want to oh, say yeah. that yeah yes <laughs> well make sure at the end let us know how we can stay in touch with you so we can watch those videos um, so, uh, I'm going to move on to the next question just because this is so great and I want to get to it. I'm going to try to be really fast. <laughs> I know, I know it's so hard. Let's come back. Let's talk for an hour next time. Um, so someone asked too in the chat, I would love to address. So some of these things we, they talked about, like uh, someone asked about recovering from it. So you're talking about some things that we can do. Can you talk about that? So recovery is for most of us going to look like active recovery because we don't get burnout leave, which they do in Germany, but that's a subject for another day. So my, again, I just talked about doing a yoga teacher training. The power of pranayama or breath work is, it's just chemistry. It works almost instantly and it changes the pH of your blood, which then lowers your blood pressure. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go into it, but it's, it's just, it's just science. So there's two forms of breath work you could look up right now. One is called box breath and one is called four, seven, eight breath. So if you learn those two breathing techniques, you can do it without anyone noticing. And that's sort of like an instant. It's almost like a little, like taking a little piece of a Valium and having it hit you right away. It will make a dent in it. Now, that being said, if I'm having a full panic attack, that's not really going to do much for me, but it will distract me and it works. 
prioritize sleep. And if that means going to your doc and getting a medication, do it. Because when you're stressed out, sometimes you can't turn that head off at night. And if you have to, you know, melatonin, valerian root, uh, you know, something fun for your doctor, whatever works, prioritize sleep. You got to sleep. It's so important for your brain function. Um, the next one, nutrition. And that doesn't mean I don't want you to, this is not the time to go out and say, I'm only eating a thousand calories and salad. Stop. Eat what your body digests. Don't challenge yourself. Don't deprive yourself. Feed your body. So many of us hear nutrition and we think, oh, I'm going on a diet and I'm not going to eat enough. No, eat to satiety. Your brain is using a lot of extra chemicals and a lot of extra, there's cortisol going on. Your body needs to replenish nutrients. So don't be afraid of food. Eat what works. Um, purpose for your burnout. Try to remind yourself why you're here. And that might go back to prevention because if you can't think of a single reason you're there, maybe it's time to think about changing environments and jobs. This isn't a stepping stone somewhere, or if you're not working for a company that's doing great things, you really want to be that in the world or something, then, you know, maybe you're looking at the root of your burnout. You got to have a purpose. Um, and then the next tip goes into that. If you don't have a purpose, have a long-term goal to get out. Because when you have that hard day, it's so much better to be like six more months of this, and then I'm going to get that certificate and new job, you know? I know it's really hard. I know you're exhausted. Maybe you lean on a counselor or a best friend or a family member. Have a plan, have like a mental vision board, right? And keep reminding yourself of that instead of ruminating on the bad day. Imagine, vision yourself in the good days in the future. Um, and having a philosophy, a personal philosophy can also help you to do this. Um, and that could be like right now I'm, I'm living yogically or it could be, hey, I'm trying DBT therapy and I'm really going to lean into that. But, you know, if you don't have a purpose or a driving instinct, it can really add to that burnout. It makes you feel like you don't exist. So find yourself a reason to exist. Um, we have four minutes. I want to mention something I did not invent, but it is really important. Once you've had all that journaling and you've done a little bit of introspection, there is something that was, um, I think Dr. Tony Atwood and a blogger, um, don't know their name. Yes, Maja Tudal. It's a beautiful name and I hope I am pronouncing it correctly. Um, she is an author. She came up with something called energy accounting. Who here has a checkbook? everybody right so when you balance your checkbook or when you you hop online and you see your account you see what's called double entry accounting on the left you got your debits and on the right you have your credits that's what i want you to do with your days look through that journal pick a monday right what do we do monday first task we did hmm did that give me energy or did that drain my energy so if it gave you energy, you put it in the credit column. And if it drained your energy, you put it in the debit column. Keep doing this for your days, a few days in a row. Now look at the pattern. First of all, if you're in burnout, you're going to have more debits than credits. Second of all, if you're in bad burnout, it's going to be all debits and almost no credits. So what you got to do is just like your checkbook, you got to balance it. And if you balance tasks that give you energy with tasks that drain your energy, and you have nice balance lists at the end of your journaling week, you're going to be in less burnout. So this is how to manage that long-term burnout when you're kind of stuck and you're able to function for your kids and your job, but you're not like taking joy out of life. This is how to get hopefully to that thriving place. It's it's a long-term sort of plan. But I those were all the 13 steps and the energy accounting is not mine, but I use it every day. And I it's so dead simple to sort of look from day to day to just feel I don't know what happened. It's the worst day. But you could look at it and be like, oh I know what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't take it day. And sometimes you gotta really, you know, in the thick of it you can't see it. Yeah. It's yeah. it's so hard to keep track of everything. And 
so much of what you're talking about, the box breath, the journaling, the, I, I love energy accounting. I never heard that before. Food is fuel. You were saying, you know, of like being good to your body with that. There's so much great stuff in there. There, there was a whole other topic I hoped to, to talk to you about with like employers, but we're out of time. Oh, we can't yes. do it all, Nicole. <laughs> but thank you so much for making the time today. Please, please, please come back. And how can folks stay connected to you and um, keep the conversation going? I'm sure there's so thank many questions. Thank you so much like, for uh, having me. I am oh at nerdynicole.com. And that's easy to remember. You'll just go on there, click on the autistic burnout page to check out the autism work. You can find me at Medium at the Autistic Burnout. Um, and I am going to go ahead and encourage people now that they have all of that really good information about what kind of job to look for and what kind of strategies to use. I'm gonna drop the link to the job fair that is part of this event for watchers to hopefully hop on, look for a good employer, remember what you're gonna do to prevent burnout in your new job, remember what you're gonna do when it inevitably happens, and hopefully the employers who are here will be listening and learning and there to accommodate you. Amazing, Nicole, thank you so much for this. Keep the conversation going with Nicole at nerdynicole.com. Amazing that you got that domain. Proud of you. That's so great. <laughs> I decided to use what they called me in school as a strength, right? Mm. Yeah. Yes. Reclaim that. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take that. Look who's, look who's on top now. My brand now. <laughs> Nicole, thank you so much. I hope we get to do this again. And I'm just blown away by what we were able to pack in in 30 minutes. And that's all thanks to you. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And I'm so looking forward to the rest of the summit. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. Please chime in on the chat. We would love to hear from you too, as we're going on. You have so much insight. Thank you, Hunter. Thank you, Nicole. Take care of that pit bull. Oh, I will. She's so ready for a walk. What's her name? <laughs> her name is Dot because she has the best dots She's black and white. <laughs> that's great we'll have to Thanks. bring her out next time oh please do all right bye nicole bye Dot. bye we'll hunter later. bye hunters chihuahua <laughs> yes the chihuahua is part of the call today everyone thank you so much <laughs> bye now <laughs>